Fort Worth West Side. I realize I'm insulin resistant for sure. Yes, you're insulin resistant. You're also diabetic. This was after being told my blood glucose was fine since my A1C was 5.6. Is it possible to be a diabetic and still have a normal A1C reading? Yes, it is. And again, as we started with the comment here that the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists warns against the very common practice of just using A1C. Now, let me go back and retract the comment. I said you're diabetic. I really cannot say that. I will say this anytime because I don't have a physician relationship with you, Fort Worth. So there's some technical issues as well as some other things. But I can say this. The standard is once you go over 200, in any type of testing, even this type of testing, the standard is to label it that individual as having full-blown type 2 diabetes. Now we could quibble over it and some people would say, no, 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 you have to have it twice. Well, I would look at this and I would say you had it twice. But for all intents and purposes, I just do not see telling somebody with the numbers that you just gave us that they don't have diabetes and their work cut out for them. So I would love to share a couple of thoughts on the blood sugar opportunity to be curious. We've seen that. So sometimes somebody's morning blood sugars are elevated than the rest of the days that they tend not to be. So whenever I see somebody getting fasting lab work as kind of a screening and if they have an elevated morning blood sugar and it doesn't quote unquote fit with everything else, of course, everything you've talked about, but poor sleep by itself can also give you an adrenaline cortisol. So sometimes we see early morning sugar rises. So just a bit of a clue, not diagnostic. Also, they've done studies to show people's blood sugars if they were sleep deprived. Now that's harsh, right? That's no sleep versus some sleep. Most of us get some sleep, but to be more demonstrative, to make it more clear that these studies were done and they showed great rises in blood sugar in the morning and people did not sleep. And I don't know how they were able to do this in a study that looked at you know, the stuff that we measure on the A1C. The technical term is called age product, A-G-E, advanced glycosylated end product. Just right. basically that little sugared stuff. You know, some of the people at Hopkins were dissecting it out, you know, and showing beautiful pictures that looked like creme brulee underneath the microscope, by the way. So that and was- That's sort of what creme brulee is too, especially when you, uh, you burn it. But anyhow, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Right? When you show that to people, it was funny. I used to tell that story and every Monday I would do that talk at the resort and every Monday they served creme brulee for a while. I totally ruined their menu uh, <laughs> unintentionally. It was kind of like people were giving me like the, the evil eye when I'd walk by the dining room. If somebody just tuned in and they're hearing us talk about hemoglobin A1C, AGE, advanced glycation end products and creme brulee, the, the connection here. So when you burn something that's oxidizing, AGE is advanced glycation end products. You know, they don't teach a whole lot about the subtleties of diabetes, especially when I was in medical school over 30 years ago. But we did have one professor who would come around and he had a plastic piece of muscle. And he would say, this is your muscle. This is your body tissue on diabetes. And his point was diabetes actually oxidizes, burns your tissues. In his perspective, rubberizes or plasticizes. Wow. The point is, yes, we wonder why it has such a big impact. It has an impact throughout our body. It's the number one cause of, as you know, blindness, the number one cause of kidney failure, number one cause of heart attack, number one cause of stroke. And it's because we're burning our tissues, all of our body tissues on a regular basis and we don't believe it or we don't feel it. So we just don't notice it. And unfortunately, as Fort Worth West Side shared, most of us with the problem are constantly being told you don't have it. Well, you don't have it if you don't look for it correctly. Back to the point about the dessert. When you burn this dessert, you're oxidizing it. And that's exactly what you get in the proteins in our body. There's a strong case to be made that what we call essential hypertension. That means essential means we don't know what caused it. Hypertension is high blood pressure. There's a very good case to be made that a whole lot, if not most, essential hypertension is actually clogging of some of the glomeruli sensing organs with AGE. Now, if you say I've never heard of AGE, advanced glycation end products, yes, you have if you've heard of A1C. A1C is a protein and it's been oxidized by binding to glucose. 